in 14 years. All right, welcome back to Allegheny Health Network Nightly Sports Call. We're going to get to the phones in a couple seconds, um, read some tweets here in a couple minutes, Gene. You know, the Pirates, they have a golden opportunity here. They don't start until Friday, so we got a couple boring days, no days with the, without baseball today and tomorrow. And um, so you got to sit and you got to look at the Pirates standings, try to evaluate the first half, look ahead to the second half. There's seven games out. There are five games under 500. We know that. But look at the stretch that they have here. They have a seven-game homestand against the Cardinals and the Brewers, a golden opportunity to make up some ground. they got 44 of their next 73 against division opponents. I, I think they need to win 30 of those to, to just be a real contender and someone to, to – to really consider as a division winner. Right, and 30 is a lot. Um, yeah, 30 a lot. That would be like winning every series. That's the way I looked sure, at it. Yeah. Um, you know, um, the last time we had a conversation sort of like this, Richie, the last golden opportunity <laughs> was when they had seven games against the Giants and the Phillies, right? Yeah, they won, you're right. They won three of those games. But, um, and got swept by the worst team, the Giants, right? right? That's so. Right. Well, no, the Phillies are worse than the Giants, but uh, but now you have what amounts to a critical homestand. The, Pir the Pirates have not been good at home. I think they might be 20 and 22, something like that. Uh, but yeah, three with the Cardinals, four with the Brewers, who are you know the only good team in the division. I mean, and if you get if you get one, if you get two of these games with the Cardinals and two with the Brewers, you know that's that's really not going to do you much good. No, you can't go 500 against your division opponents. I mean, you have a losing record against the Reds. You have 12 games against the Reds. I think it's 12 against the Brewers, 13 against the Cardinals, and 7 against the Cubs. Yeah, you pretty uh, much have to get 5 of these next 7, I would say. Yeah, 5 of the next 7. I, and I, I, I think that they need to win all those series, which they won't. But um, realistically, um, you know, you know, 20, they got to be around 27 to 30 games, and that's a lot. Uh, out of 44. All right, let's go out to the phone lines, and we're going to go out to Jerry in Hemfield. How you doing, Jerry? Hey, how you doing, Richard Gene? Hey, uh, I'm going to disagree with you. You said they should keep McCutcheon. You think they are because of tenders. Let me tell you, you're mistaken. The pirate management, they want to get rid of him as soon as they can to save his salary. They're all about money. Look at who they got rid of before and they could have kept. They could care less about McCutcheon. They can get rid of him and save that money. They will do it. They don't care who they get in return for them. But they're going to lose that money in attendance is what I'm saying. They're going to lose that money the rest of the season because people, people aren't going to show up. They're so, good people. They're going to show up, but they get TV revenue. Now, that's how they look at it. They're they get TV get revenue. Money. It's not as much as any other team. They don't get a lot of money from TV revenue. They're but, not making a lot of money. I mean, Gene, I, you know, yeah. thanks for your call, Jerry. Okay, buddy. Um, I appreciate it. But, you know, I, look, this is the best time to trade Andrew McCutcheon. Would, would you not agree with me? Well, his value. His value is the highest. He's as high as it's ever been. He has a good option, a good number, $14 million. Um, and right now he's proven to be the best center fielder in the game yeah, well, that's also at the plate. Keep, uh, I, I agree. I agree with that. He's very affordable. Um, so, I mean, that, you know, that's a bit of an oversimplification on the part of the caller there. I mean, yeah, they would like to not pay $14 million, but that's not very much for Andrew McCutcheon. And he does bring people to the ballpark. Yeah, and I think that's a big reason why you have to keep them. That's a big reason. You know, I could argue this, this both ways, Gene, and I'm sure you could too, but uh, I, I, I don't know what they're going to do. I think they're going to try to move him because his value is at his highest, but then you also got to think about what's it going to do for the rest of the season. All right, back out to your phones, and we're going to go out to Thomas in Clareton. How you doing, Thomas? Uh, pretty good. Thanks for calling. Um, my beef on it is the attendance. When this came up, during the winter about the trading, I think this hurt attendance because they lost about 125,000 last year. And they're predicting this year they're going to lose between 250,000 and 400,000, even with him here. They're going to cut the payroll because I have heard that they, they may go down and cut the payroll down to 45,000. This is the way this team has been operating if you follow their history. Yeah, you know what? If they cut the payroll, Gene, I, I don't know. Well, if I mean, they cut it to forty-five thousand, that is going to be a problem. It's going to be a big the union's problem. Union's not going to put up with that. But if they cut it to forty-five million, I, I you know, I, they can't. You can't survive with that kind of payroll, and I don't think that they that's, they can't do that it. That, I don't know where. I've never heard that. But I've never. That's ridiculous. But you know, you 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 send Andrew McCutcheon away. Um, and if you trade Garrett Cole, which, you know, I don't think that they're going to trade him, but I don't see him being a, a pirate for the long term. 
Um, I, I think you're telling your fans, hey, we're, we're not in this. Even though we're seven to five games out of it, um, we, we still have an opportunity come two weeks. Um, you, you're kind of, even if you're five games out of it and you trade Andrew McCutcheon, it's basically like giving up on the season. Yeah, I mean, that, all teams, many, many teams face this exact predicament. Uh, in two weeks, uh, you'll know, people start to move and, you know, people will declare themselves whether they do it, you know, uh, literally or not, buyers or sellers. And, you know, I think at that point the, the Pirates will be sellers. But, you know, we, we have to wait and see. It's only the 12th. The deadline's not till the 31st. Yeah, and the problem is, is the, um, you know, the Pirates, <laughs> they're not, they're in the worst possible spot. Either be ahead in the division or be in last place like the Reds so you know you're going to be a buyer or seller. Um, all right, let's go out to the phone lines. We got Ed in Monroeville. How you doing, Ed? Good, uh, good, uh, uh, you guys. Hey, I want to support uh, Gene's article that he had in the Sunday paper. Um, I might be a little old school. I've been following the Pirates. I'm 63. Clemente was my hero. I used to love Forts Field. But, uh, you know, another angle on this is, you know, if I was a season ticket holder, spending all this money to buy season tickets – uh, back maybe uh, before the season started. And all of a sudden, one of their star players like Marte is suspended for 80 games. You know, I, I think I could demand a, a refund in my, my, in my tickets, ticket pricing that I paid. So but anyway, I, I just wanted to support Gene very much in that article. I thought it was a great article this past Sunday. You know, good luck with that, but he makes a good point. I mean, yeah, fans, you, you got a guy yeah, that's missing 80 uh, games. Uh, first, thanks for your support. I could use it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we've uh, we've talked about this uh, scenario before on the show, and uh, I think what I said, and I'll say it again: uh, if you want a refund from the Pirates, God bless you. Ask them. As my as my uh, my dear mother-in-law always says, all they could say is no. Yeah, you're right. Ask them. Ask them for a refund. Uh, I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they w they're not going to be too accommodating with doesn't that. Doesn't hurt but to ask. You're right. It doesn't. <laughs> All right, I'm going to read some tweets when we come back. We've got to take a break. Back with more of your phone calls, some of your tweets. Coming up next, stay right there.